The launching phase takes us from the end of the loading phase to the contact point with the ball, and it consists of five noticeable movements. And in this video, we are going to talk about the first one, which is the continuation of the timing step and identify the muscles involved with this motion. The timing step began in the loading phase when the front leg was raised off the ground and the player's weight was momentarily rocked onto the back leg. Now, the continuation of this timing step, where it begins to return back to the ground, is the first part of the launching phase. Now, depending on the player's technique, the timing step of the front foot can actually be a short stride towards the pitcher by a few inches and perhaps more, or it can simply be placed back down on the ground as shown by our player's technique here. But whichever technique is used, the lowering and turning of this timing step outward to the ground triggers the initiation of the swing. This outward turning of the timing step is caused by muscles acting higher up in the player's left hip, known as the external hip rotators, and it forces the toes of his left foot to point outward in the direction of first base, as seen here. Now, compared to player's left foot position here, with the one while in the stance position seen here, and you can start to see this repositioning more clearly. And here's another look at these same two feet positions side by side, which may further help you to see the effects the external hip rotators have on the timing step. The external hip rotators in the player's left hip that make this happen are gluteus medius, gluteus maximus, superior gemellus, piriformis, obturator internus, inferior gemellus, obturator externus, and quadratus femoris. Now, since a lot of one's batting power comes from hip rotation, the repositioning of the timing step, where the toes are now pointing outward down toward first base, is necessary since this starts the opening of both hips toward the pitcher, which is the direction the batter will end up facing at contact. The contraction of the player's left external hip rotators to point the toes outward will load or stretch the antagonistic or opposing muscles in this same left hip, namely the internal hip rotators. The internal hip rotators are the gluteus minimus, gluteus medius, and tensor fascia lata. Now, you may have noticed that the gluteus medius is both an external and internal hip rotator, and this is because the anterior fibers of this muscle cause internal hip rotation, and the posterior fibers of this muscle cause external hip rotation. Now, these internal hip rotator muscles in the player's left hip will soon be called on to contract and help further pull the player's hips around in the swing when he is closer to the contact point with the ball. In the next video, we will talk about the second noticeable movement in the launching phase, which is the opening of the hips, and identify the muscles involved with this movement. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to, please leave a comment or suggestion regarding this segment of the anatomy of the baseball swing.